It's October the 15th, I believe. <laughs> 16th. I'll get there. We always get there at some point. Welcome, everybody. I'm Dana Durnford. I'm also known as the Nuclear Proctologist dot org. And we didn't do a show on Sunday. I've been down with the flu for over two weeks now. Surreal. Haven't had the flu in a decade. <clears throat> We're getting over it, I think, finally. Going to cover a new cycle. And step back for a second to the last couple of years. I just want to cover some stories we covered over the last couple of years. Um, when Fukushima may destroy the whole country, a collapse of a whole country is possible. One Fukushima. So they're only talking about a single reactor. What you're looking at is two reactors are gone and uh, four decades of reactor cores were stored in the fuel pool. That's gone. And there's four billions, uh, four billion buildings. I gotta put the headphones on so you can hear me self tonight. <laughs> there's four buildings <coughs> that are uh, reactor buildings, reactors, and eight fuel pools are gone. It's hard to comprehend how many bad facets nuclear power has. 150 miles away, pure water was able to detect anti-neutrinos from a nuclear power plant. That's pretty impressive, right? 150 miles away. Something even more impress impressive was it's under a kilometer of rocks of granite. And 150 miles away, a tank of the purest water flashes antineutrinos. Detectable particles slam through the molecules of purest water. And these are known as antineutrinos, originating, these are particles, by the way, originating from a nuclear reactor 240 kilometers, 150 miles away. So the nuclear power plants, energy off-site is felt a mile under rocks and 150 miles away. So imagine living in that neighborhood. What's really going to be happening to the molecules and your children and your loved ones and your elderly and the victims of your communities? Uh, the United States gathered uh, to dispose of depleted uranium munitions from the A-10 Warthog is one of the major proliferators of these dirty bombs. Each of them is a dirty bomb, and these have gone through a chain reaction. So these meet the criteria for a dirty bomb. And they wanted to get rid of 35.7 million munitions with dirty bomb cores, what they call depleted uranium. It used to be called Dolram, depleted uranium low-level radioactive material. And because it's gone through a chain reaction, um, these bullets, when they're going through the air, they become pyrophoric, where they catch fire. And they release huge amounts of low-level radiation compared to fuel rods, but they're still brutally dangerous radiation. And in Fallujah, where they used a lot of this, in Basra, in uh, Iraq, 86% of the women had deformed babies. So higher levels of radiation is uh, fallout, radioactive fallout, for instance. And the International Atomic Energy Agency, which has some reason has become the arbiter of everything on this planet. Says, and they're just a corporation like McDonald's, except it's a military, military industrial complex. They don't deserve to exist. International Atomic Energy Agency says public trust is key 
and the projects using radioactive soil. So they got 30 million uh, one-ton bags. What they're doing there is they're in the nuclear wasteland a couple of kilometers away from the ongoing meltdowns. They're cutting the bags open and dumping the soil that they picked up, 30 million one-ton bags, and they spent around $20 billion doing it. And because you're not paying attention anymore, they're so arrogant that they're dumping the soil and growing food in it for sale. The International Atomic Energy Agency is not a regulator and not in a position to judge or approve Japan's soil recycling program. You can't recycle this stuff. This is radioactive fallout, for goodness sakes. And the same thing's applicable to the to the discharges into the ocean, by the way, that's been going on for 12 years. There is no containment. And the soil, 30 million one-ton bags, was held at 105,000 sites. Nobody would take it. And now they're growing food in because you are not paying attention to the most evil, hideous, monstrous, insidious industry in history. Science outweighs irrational reasoning. The author is a professor. It's a professor at the Department of Nuclear and Quantum Engineering in South Korea. And so it's humiliating when I have to come out and say that suggesting that 1.37 million tons of water in the fake water in the empty tanks, you can't contain the radiation at this site. And he said it's equal to 2.2 grams that's all that got out of these buildings is 2.2 grams. And so what, like you got a, a professor from nuclear and quantum engineering at a university telling you it's equal to 2.2 grams without showing you, and now to show you that picture and say it, it doesn't work, right? But uh, Young Jung Il says also that it's like three grams of sugar going into the ocean. So nuclear meltdowns, they have dumbed down the population of the entire planet so much that they're confident that nobody is going to hold them accountable for such a... You can't even call it a lie. It's such a big, such an impossible comparison to suggest that there's only 2.2 grams got out of multiple nuclear reactor meltdowns. Each of these buildings is worse than all nuclear reactor meltdowns worldwide in history, is each of these buildings by many, many magnitudes, orders of magnitudes. They have decades of reactor cores and fuel pools, see? and that's gone. I got about 10 of these headlines, because i draw you a stark comparison. This is a nuclear scientist. Is he working at Fukushima? No. Has he ever been to Fukushima nuclear meltdowns? No. Did he show you this picture with his assertions that it's like 2.2 grams of tritium or equal to 3 grams of sugar going into the ocean? Did that esteemed professor from a most uh, prestigious university in South Korea no. You know who's doing the work there? Workers are tricked to being on the front lines at Fukushima plant. After a few days, they throw you away because you're going to die in the near future from the gamma shines, the x-rays, the neutron bombardments, the beta rays. The mentally handicapped are working at Fukushima and are given second-hand paper suits. TEPCO claimed that he burned 7,000 paper suits a day because <coughs> they're too radioactive to reuse. Now, this is ludicrous to suggest that a paper suit can protect you from multiple nuclear meltdowns. It's the definition of insanity. It's the definition of insanity to suggest that paper suits can protect you and multiple, even a single nuclear meltdown. 
And Forbes, which is unbelievable, despicable, pro-nuclear, on a level that is revolting, even said it was outrageous that homeless people are being sold to companies. I'm surprised they call them people. They usually don't. And put the work on Fukushima radiation. Not scientists, not academics, not professors, but the homeless and the destitute and the victims of society. At the end of the month, they're left with no pay. They're making an average of about $11 United States a day to do the most dangerous job in human history. And at the end of the month, they are in debt to their employees for food and housing fees. So their health is destroyed and and their monetary is stolen on them. And so if your gas plant, oil plant, or coal plant breaks down, should 60 and older be prepared to die? Why do you have that on your planet? Why are you silent? Obviously, I'm not talking to those who watch these videos regularly and support me. And, you know... The last vestige on my site is the comments section. That's been infiltrated by the nuclear industry time after time after time over the last decade. I've seen uh, the pro-nuclear ingratiate themselves into the regulars on my comments section for up to several years before they were outed as the pro-nuclear industry. And what they do is they leave... Uh, misrepresentation and comments constantly. It's very subtle, and that's what we cover a lot of times, is this subtle indoctrination and brainwashing. And, you know, there's nothing, there's no other way they can get at me or get at you is through that comment section. And uh, it's difficult for me to keep the comment section, but I always remind myself, I check myself because the world should have a spot where they can come and ask questions or come and talk. But unfortunately, it's not going to be free of the parasites, the, the, the insane industry itself. Uh, you don't see the universities working at Fukushima. You don't see the academics, the scientists, the nuclear experts, the nuclear pundits working at Fukushima or even visiting it. There's over 300 police were dead. I think that was 2016. Just dropped dead trying to keep people out of the nuclear wasteland. What they call for some reason no-go zone. Everybody else worldwide acknowledges it as a nuclear wasteland. Japan doctor, Tokyo should no longer be inhabited. And everyone here is a victim of Fukushima. People are truly suffering, bleeding under the skin, urinary hemorrhaging. Children's blood tests started changing. Time is running short. It's up to the physicians to save the citizens and the future generations. Tokyo professor, surges in airborne radioactive release has gone on for years at Fukushima, exceeding 25,000 times the normal limit. Uh, something like 29 million times in some of the the reports and studies that we've accumulated over the last 12 years. Photographer X-ray-like images show how radioactivity is spread throughout the bodies of Fukushima wildlife. Because the wildlife is completely contaminated. And every atom that's in your body, your body attacks it. Or trees, or plants, or insects, or animals, or birds, or the, the chicklets, or the hatchlings, or the, the baby this and the baby that. Tokyo professor couldn't help but feel pity for the trees. The x-ray like images showed the spread of radioactivity equivalent of miscarriages, stillbirths, congenital malformations. So the plants, the trees, the animals have all been quantified as incredibly radioactive. Due to these pulse massive catastrophic events, cesium remains dispersed throughout the water column from the surface to the ocean floor from the surface to the ocean floor. And if you only acknowledge cesium, you are way, way out of the big picture. 
uh, curium isotope is the biggest byproduct of the radiated fuel rod, for goodness sakes. And you need lead shielding 20 times thicker than you do for plutonium. That should be in the equation, right? Fukushima radiation is still circling the globe. And the levels consistently rise and fall in a 40-day cycle. And uh, I'll, br I'll just give you a little model so you can kind of appreciate what that basically entails. And I'm in the wrong spot. There we go. There's many, many models, many, many different countries. So, but I'm just going to show you. This uh, bottom right hand bottom corner is uh, 19.5 days, 468 hours later. Up to 2,000 grains of radioactive pollen inhaled in a cubic meter of air. So imagine what's happening to the pollinators if the pollen is that radioactive. And what if the pollinators, we can't have a future. There's another headline that you should give you pause. The former Prime Minister Shurga abandoned the appeal of the Black Rains uh, Habakusha lawsuit. This is the victims from Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So since 1945, they've been denied health care. The ja Japanese government officials argued that the Black Rain case, the ingestion of food and water, would only add up to a small amount of radiation that would be insufficient to cause any health problems. But it's it's well known in the animal studies and and, and uh, human experiments, and they've done a lot of that with radiation. They're well aware of how dangerous it is, and you can go to any nuclear country, and that's available in the academic studies. Uh, so if a single atom gets in your body, this is the consensus. If a single atom, you put 200 million atoms on the head of a needle, but you can't see it. If a single one of them gets in your body and sequestering your muscles, your organs, your bones, your body attacks it for the rest of your life with white blood cells for the rest of your life. So uh, it explodes every second at the speed of light, this pulse of energy that you call a back wall. And it destroys chromosomes and DNA and cells in every direction. Your body can't keep up with the repairs of that every second. And, but at the same time, it has to repair all of that damage, and it has to try to build a sarcophagus, you call it a tumor, around the unknown object. It's considered a foreign object. And your body doesn't have autoimmune trigger to defend against it. <coughs> um, and what happened with a nuclear weapon is it, it consumes steel and rebar and cement and people and horses and animals. Like horses were thrown 600, with people were thrown 600 feet in the air or more after Hiroshima, during Hiroshima and Nagasaki. But also during the heat wave that was incinerated, was atomized and aerosoled, ionized and radiated, and that became radioactive fallout that was picked up worldwide. The High Court also raises the prospect including health problems of individuals who ingest radiation contaminated water or food rather than those who had external exposure only. So I'm sorry. So what they, try, what they were doing for 75 years was only looking at external radiation. And they were saying there was enough external radiation to cause some health problems, but there was no internal radiation. And so they denied the health care, and now there's only a few victims left. And so a couple of years ago, prime, the former Prime Minister Suga in Japan decided to give the remaining 70 or so victims out of the millions that originally got sick and were denied their entire life and their loved ones health care. Health care. But... It was quickly acknowledged then that one high-ranking health ministry official said that if that standard was finalized and used as a precedent in other lawsuits, government policies regarding compensation for the victims of Fukushima ac accident would be turned upside down because you would have to acknowledge ingestion. And he refused to do it since Hiroshima in 1945 in Nagasaki. 
<clears throat> Another headline you should be aware of was there was really important records were kept of the, the original volunteers and the victims and, and the communities and stuff like that. And so there was 42 communities in particular that tossed out the records from the quake. At the same time, they had built a $150 million museum uh, to tell the story about uh, seven kilometers away from Fukushima. But the museum has 160,000 ex ex exhibits and they refuse to use these, the actual documentation. That part of history they don't want remembered. And they quantified it by saying they had nowhere to store it despite the fact they have an absurd amount of places to, stir, to store it and everything else. The, uh, the municipalities in Iwati, Miyagi, Fukushima prefectures reported throwing out the records throwing out the records. They had already been discharged, including notification from the central government and list of names of volunteer workers. And the preservation period had expired. We don't have space to preserve the documents. Well, why wouldn't you have space to preserve the documents from the original nuclear meltdown and the victims who put their lives on the line? Why wouldn't you? And, and another unbelievable, hideous, dirty secret of the nuclear industry, lead aprons offer little protections during x-rays. It was worse than that. The lead a they want you to stop using the lead aprons. And one of the problems was that the downside of the sh so-called shielding, because it, it doesn't shield you, what happens is it it obscures the imaging field, leading to an unusable x-ray or CAT scan, requiring the patient to have another. This increases his or her radioactivity exposures. And that one study found the shields were misplaced half the time during pelvic x-rays. And well, what happens? What ends up happening is the most imaging machines that use radiation automatically determine the dose of the radiation required to produce a successful image. And if the machine senses a shield, it increases the dose in an effort to get an image through the shield, leading to an increase in radiation exposure. That's more than an increase in radiation exposure. That's an assault. That's an injury and an assault to um, anything with replicating cells. Okay, so let's get into the news cycle, see if we can get through it. Hurricane Lydia makes landfall as a Category 4 near Mexico, Puerto Rico, Puerto Vallarta Resort. This is a huge uh, hurricane with winds of 140 miles per hour, which means it's gusting about 210. 140, typically the gust will be an extra 70 miles per hour. <clears throat> so I'm still on, and there's nothing wrong with it, but I'm still on the uh, lime juice and lemon squeeze into my water and ice water to keep my throat calm. In 2015, they, and so post Fukushima, hurricanes, typhoons, cyclones, have increased the speed uh, and width and size and durations have increased by 100 to 150%. And when it's not unusual post Fukushima to have uh, hurricanes, uh, cyclones, typhoons coming ashore and grinding the coastline instead of um, slowing down at over 200 miles per hour sustained winds, and gusting over 300 miles per hour, and they don't have infrastructure or building codes to accommodate these catastrophic uh, numbers. We had a poll, is South Korea, Taiwan, China, International Atomic Energy Agency's assertion 
The Fukushima only emitted 2.2 grams of tritium, actually evil. And somebody said no. Because I explained that at the beginning of the video, this, they're suggesting that nothing got out of the nuclear meltdowns. Only 2.2 grams, we covered it at the very beginning. And so these buildings each lost close to 10 million pounds, or maybe a hell of a lot more, because the fuel pools at the top of the buildings are stuffed with reactor cores. They don't have a repository anywhere on the entire planet, let alone Japan. TEPCO opened a hatch on reactor container at Fukushima plant. Te TEPCO. TEPCO, which is not a decommissioned authority, opened a hatch on a nuclear meltdown. Uh huh. Oh, oh, wow, that's, that's impressive. <laughs> so this is a nuclear meltdown that burned at 9,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures. But you see the circle to the right? How can that exist when you had 9,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures, when it burnt constantly for several days? How can that exist? And which reactor are we talking about? And, t and the reason TEPCO, Tokyo Electric Power Company, exists today is so that you blame them for anything instead of the nuclear industry, which is the appropriate one to blame. So reactor two, unit two reactor. <coughs> that's just the heat signature up at the top of the screen for reactor two. That's a hundred, that one was liquefied. It actually liquefied. It's right alongside of reactor three and reactor one, which both detonated and meltdown. Number three and number four is all right alongside of each other. Let me just bring up a couple of headlines of reactor two. We got quite the storm going on down here. A huge rains, 40 to 50 millimeters, as we're talking. And that's not what I wanted. Bear with me. I'm gonna bring up some headlines of reactor two. Here we go. Number one melted down in 50 minutes. Just looking for a unit two, it'll take a second. There we go. So number one, which is d all the reactors melted down right away because never had any um, power. Number one was confirmed in 50 minutes had melted down. The same would have happened with the other reactors. You lost power. It was 1,200 miles of the coastline stripped. U.S. media only mentioned reports about melt through at reactor number one, not at number two and number three, but number two and number three melted out. It was full, and the reactor fuel pools melted down, and they burnt constantly for several days. That those uh, in number one and number two, Japan confirms full meltdown at all three reactors. If you got full meltdowns of reactors, then these there's no infrastructure can exist. Tokyo Electric Power Company. It partially opened a hatch on the containment vessel in Reactor 2. There is no containment vessel at Reactor 2, or Reactor 1, or Reactor 3. That's not up for discussion. There's nothing left. This is Reactor 4. Uh, it's just two buildings away from Reactor 2. Right alongside of Reactor... Let's say Reactor 2 didn't melt down. Let's just say that. It was perfect. 
even if it was perfect, Reactor 3 right alongside of it detonated. It threw the assemblies and turned them into projectiles. And assemblies are 100 fuel rods. Each fuel rod is 18 pounds and 12 feet long. They say nuclear fuel debris, nuclear fuel melted and solidified. Well, there's little bits of it left, but it's gone. China syndrome in reactor two. The company, which is not a decommissioned authority and shouldn't exist and calls for it to be removed, to have echoed for many, many years, will insert a robotic arm from Britain. Now, once that robotic arm, if it does make it there, and they say they're going to get a couple of grams of fuel out of the containment. This is the, the alleged fable. right? They pretended they were in reactor 3 and got the fuel out of the pool. They pretended they were in reactor 4 and got the fuel out of the pool. And now they're going to pretend reactor 2. Because nobody's holding them accountable. I've been virtually silence, geo geonetted. Let me show you what they've done for reactor 4, so you can appreciate what I'm talking about, just in case you're not familiar. The, this is the mainstream media, this is just a fraction of the world's media, pretending they're in the building to your left, at the very top of it, which no longer exists. 16 dollars should be prepared to die at Fukushima. Out of the other one to three reactor buildings were meltdown, not meltdowns, but meltdown. And why aren't you counting reactor four? Does that not look like it's a meltdown to anybody? They refuse to acknowledge reactor four has any damage to official pictures to your right and it's the official picture to your left. One of them can't be real. R these are right alongside of each other, reactor three and reactor four. You know, one to three buildings were were meltdown with no S. We see that over and over, by the way. I'm surprised you even said that word, occurred. Typical plans start the removal. The first round of debris removal from the Unit 2 building at the end of the fiscal 2023, which is March of next year, I believe. The robotic arm will pass through an equipment transportation passage. Equipment transportation <laughs> passage. Lethal doses everywhere. Running through the containment vessel. There is nothing runs through. The, con the containment vessel doesn't exist. This was 100% loss of inventories. The expectations clicked initially a few grams of the debris. In mid-April, TEPCO started the operation to open the hatch that leads to the transportation passage by remote control. At first, the operation was supposed to be completed in about one month, but it took TEPCO until Thursday to finish due to the difficulty removing a fixing bolt. TEPCO pulled the handle of the hatch and successfully opened it about 10 centimeters. Listen, there's zero possibility what they're saying is true. It's zero possibility. Johnny Samelli arrested again for unauthorized kick stream in a restaurant. Now, he was arrested for being Johnny Samelli, which is his pseudo name. And so he uh, I went to, the, this is a strange story, he went to a construction site and broke into the construction site and started yelling, Fukushima, 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 and got arrested. That doesn't even make any sense. It makes zero sense. And so whatever he was doing inside the restaurant, it was more than an illegal stream, I can assure you. He was probably talking about radioactive sushi, no doubt. Tokyo Electric Power Company begins test extraction of the number two fuel residue from Fukushima nuclear power plant unit two. <coughs> in the plant, a robotic arm is supposed to be inserted into a plate with a diameter of 50 centimeters leading to the containment vessels. 
The industry is insane, right? <clears throat> There's so many lies. It's Let's just look at this for a second. It's just I got so much beer with me. I, I'm still constantly shocked by how evil the nuclear industry actually is. And anyway, let's do this. A third Fukushima nuclear worker did. Officially, nobody died. Officially, the buildings didn't melt down. Officially, nothing got out, only 2.2 grams of tritium. And officially, that's in the 1,000 tanks. Number two, spent fuel pool. This... Uh, a million times above norm and thousands of times higher than number four. This was the original cover story. So 5,000 new plant workers suffered internal radiation exposure. Well, first off, they're wearing paper suits. So there's no way to shield somebody with a paper suit. It's so absurd. It's so ridiculous because they know, they know it's murder. So. A dead man tells no tales and writes no books. <clears throat> it's the cru one of the cruelest things you ever come across is this nuclear industry. How they treat the planet is simply, uh, by all shapes and appearances, they're trying to exterminate every species and look like they finally succeeded. 80 years of emission, there's no way to put that genie back in the bottle. Checking the inside of the pipe and extracting debris after completely opening the cover. A preliminary investigation conducted by inserting a scanner in a small hole confirmed there was sediment within the pipe. So it may become difficult to insert the robot arm depending on the situation. We've covered the robot arms many times over the last four years or so. Debris shipment was originally planned for 2021 but was postponed twice due to a review of the equipment design. Once it goes in there, it's so contaminated, you can never get near it again. And if you bring out anything, it's absurd what we're talking about in danger. It's lethal doses. It is estimated a total of 880 tons of debris remains in the reactors. <coughs> and it's actually infinitely more than that. There is no fuel pools left in any of the buildings. They're long gone. And any academic that looked at the original pictures would have said, well, the reactors are gone and the fuel pools are gone. And even the later pictures, like I show you, this is three years later, any nuclear scientist on the entire planet, any professor in the nuclear industry whatsoever, any nuclear engineer anywhere on the entire planet will take one glance at that and say, well, the reactor's gone and the fuel pools are gone. But because the average person can't comprehend then they're using that against you it's weaponized against you and so here's mark jones is a world traveler and a journalist from news rebeat he's actually just a despicable anti-human scumbag francis arano group signed 1.7 billion dollar protocol agreement for the development of the mongolian uranium mine Mongolia, a very impoverished country, the nuclear industry will corrupt that beyond repair. The ceremony was held in the presence of Emmanuel Macron, president of French scum, and the Mongolian president. Arano is a company based in France that is owned by the French state itself. In recent days, the price of uranium has risen to a... Well, this is because we have serious inflation, artificially, artificial inflation, right? Because you had United Nations countries ban commodities from Russia. 
to, to punish Russia. Of course, Russia just sold to somebody else. They never got punished at all. And the con countries like Canada and America and the United Nations so-called countries didn't have a way of replacing the gas, oil, or coal. And so they caused vicious, brutal, violent harm to the population of each country, of the 195 countries. United Nations is your number one enemy. They're, they're literally the plague of humanity. Anderson predicted it could be valued up to $80 per pound by the end of the year. I've heard that every year for uh, 12 years now. And $80 per pound because of the inflation is still not enough to pay the miners to turn it into yellow cake. There's two kinds of yellow cakes. The yellow cake they make the dirty bombs out of for de depleted uranium munitions. And the yellow cake that comes out of the ground, which is totally different. The one for the bombs, they call yellow cake, is from the chain reaction. Right? And then the other yellow cake... And the idea is if you talk about yellow cake and say it's dangerous, they'll say, what are you talking about? That's the stuff that's coming out of the ground. They've done that to me numerous times in order to try to denigrate the truth. And look at the disgusting, parasitic scum French. When you look at what they've done to the French Polynesian islands, for instance, with their nuclear testing, f and they have m many, many administrations refuse to acknowledge the harm since, It was equal, the French Polynesians' radioactive fallout was equal to 12 years of a Hiroshima or a Nagasaki bomb every week for 12 years. And the difference is the Hiroshima was a uranium bomb, the Nagasaki was a plutonium bomb. And the fallout from the plutonium, which all nuclear weapons now are, is infinitely worse than uranium. Uranium bombs are brutal. Australian researchers unveil a simple, effective method for extracting uranium for seawater. First off, you have to be uh, pretty gullible to believe anything Australia tells you. The nuclear industry in Australia, I was going to say as bad as Britain, but Britain's the worst I know. Like The nuclear industry in Britain is wholly... It's evil on a level we got nothing to compare it to. There's no other industries we can compare it to. There's just pure evil people. Australia has the exact same attributes, and they're trying to be as evil as Britain, and they probably are going to succeed. You know what the British done to Australia, Maralinga and Montebello, for instance. You still can't go to Maralinga 70 odd years later because it's so radioactive. You know, that's what the nuclear industry done. It took all the beautiful, pristine atolls in the oceans, these beautiful tropical paradises, and either uh, atomized them, you know, nuked them so bad they disappeared. Or like the, the Marshall Islands, you got over a million square kilometers too radioactive to be habitable. The, the whole story of nuclear... There's not there's nothing as evil as nuclear. It it never goes away. It's evil for millions of years. The world needs to make a stand. You're gonna have to make a stand. This new method promises to meet global uranium demand. Nuclear is dying. There's no shortage of uranium for goodness sakes, but the industry is dying. And their entire legacy is predicated upon deceit and dishonesty and genocide and omnicide. And allegedly, they clean up the wastewater near nuclear plants, address radioactive wastewater near nuclear plants. All nuclear plants, all the fresh water for hundreds of miles is radioactive. All the nuclear power plants are surrounded by farms. A cleaner f future for nuclear power plants. Don't believe anything the nuclear industry tells you, and particularly Australia and Britain and Canada. Oh, this is priceless. Assassination of Shinzo Abe student performance sparks intense debate on Chinese social media. So Shinzo Abe was the previous prime minister, was killed 
uh, while campaigning for politicians from his party. And then that church now that he was affiliated with, their government is trying to def... Uh, there's a word for it. I think the story might actually be here. High school students in a northeast Chinese city have sparked intense online debate with a performance reenacting the assassination of former Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. This was uh, staged on October 10, 2023, and featured a banner criticizing Japan's decision to release the treated wastewater. And so everybody's buying into that particular story, right? And everybody's upset about it. How upset would they be if they realized this has been going on for 12 years and not tritium, it's perpetual, evil, insidious, monstrous, hideous, copious amounts of radioactive fallout. <coughs> and so these are all school students, and this is... The guy with the megaphone in the center, and he's got a, a picture strapped to his face of Shinzo Abe. The guy in your forefront with the Adidas jacket on. And so you got everybody. This was just most one of the most bizarre things I've ever seen. He steps in, raises a gun up, and he shoots Shinzo Abe's lookalike. And the crowd applauds. And I'm furious, a banner. It's unbelievable. It roughly translate as two gunshots leave a cold corpse. Wastewater releases leaves a long aftermath. That's just so appropriate for some reason. Meet Spot, the robot dog. There's, we've seen so many of these. You know, a uh, Windscale, Sellafield, and Donneray, for that matter. It's going to be over 300 years before they say they can get that place cleaned up. they got to wait for uh, students to be trained to go in there because nuclear scientists are not going there. Uh, but Windscale, which we call Sellafield now, they changed the name after the nuclear meltdown, which is still melting down in the United Kingdom. There's 8 million liters Two million gallons a day hemorrhaging into the ocean, flowing into the Atlantic Ocean. It's been doing that since 1957 or 59. I can't even remember for some reason today. 1959, I believe it was. It's eight million liters a day of mixed oxide fuel contaminated water flowing directly into the ocean. Japan built a thousand tanks to manipulate you. France pretended it didn't even happen, see? So they got another Boston Dynamics, which is Google. Google, which is Alphabet. They own Boston Dynamics, right? Which used to be owned by DARPA. There are still areas researchers would like to improve. It's a fair cry to call these people researchers. They're the very last thing I would call a researcher. Could revolutionize nuclear safety. Well, because there is no nuclear safety, any kind of move in that direction would revolutionize it. There is no, there is no nuclear safety. The nuclear industry is completely out of control. The parliaments, the, the congresses, the diets, the you know the the government doesn't have the authority to make it illegal to poison your radiation. And but they can put they there's four thousand or sixty nine thousand chemicals that they can make illegal to poison you with, but they can't make it illegal to poison you with anthropogenic man-made radiation. Because you'll never hold them accountable, there's nothing they won't do to you. Emergency response. is equipped with sensors on his back that can measure gamma rays. Well, what about the alphas and the neutrons and the bomb and the beta rays? The deputy head of the Deployed Nuclear Physics Program at Berkeley, there you go, there's your answer, Berkeley Lab. So Berkeley University is, they promoted nuclear for over 100 years now. And the nuclear back then was uh, radium suppositories 
radium lipstick, radium makeup, destroyed millions of people. The most hideous way to die is radium hand cream. The Berkeley Lab researchers, mass murderers, collaborated with Japan's Atomic Energy Agency to map houses. <coughs> I ran out of the homeless, I guess. The Japan Atomic Energy Agency to map the houses, but then he got out only 2.2 grams of tritium and it's in a thousand tanks, right? Because that's the newest story since July the 13th of this year, 2023. If it goes into a really nuclear wasteland, you can never go near the robot again. Radiation mapping could also help teams find some of the millions of landmines buried around the world where landmines are not radioactive. But Kyle Vetter from Berkeley Laboratories, remember Kyle, who was doing the kelp watch in California, and he had the results published before they even took the samples out of the ocean. And everything was safe, he said. But but it turned out they hadn't even took the samples out of the ocean. Well, land and this is scary as hell. And because Kyle Vetter is involved, he's a, prof a, a degenerate professor at UC Berkeley. He said researchers investigating how a technique called active probing using neutrons might cause the landmines to emit gamma rays. They could then detect. So they're going to use neutrons to, to make the metal radioactive. It emits gamma, and then they can find it that way. If it's evil, you can expect Kyle Berkeley to have a huge, a huge footprint in the excrement. Using neutrons might cause the landmines to emit gamma rays. I say make Kyle Vetter crawl on his hands and knees there, and when he blows up, you know, he's got one less landmine. That's probably the best thing we could ever do. They could then detect, and he's the founder or head of NEP at the Berkeley Lab, and he got that job by covering up the Fukushima fallout. We've covered that shithole many times over the years. Japan's government asked the court to revoke legal status of the Unification Church, which is Shinzo Abe's, one of Shinzo Abe turned to to get support, political support. <clears throat> Revoked their legal status, which takes away their tax-free status. Japan's Japan's government has asked the court to revoke the legal status of the Japan branch of the Unification Church. The controversial group founded in South Korea by the Reverend Sung Mong Moon, NPR Anthony Kun reports from Seoul that the government's unusual move was set in motion by a shocking crime last week. Shocking crime last week. He said the government's investigation found that the church's Japan branch had manipulated and coerced its followers for decades. Yeah, like the nuclear industry, right? The group long restricted many of its members' abilities to freely make decisions and forced them to make donations, purchase goods while not in the Condition to make sound decisions, and this is only the third time Japan's government has sought the dissolution of a religious group. Unlike this case, the other two involve criminal charges. Uh, this time, the government was prompted to act by the death of ex-Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. It was gunned down in the streets. Now, he deserved it. He's the guy who pushed food into countries worldwide nonstop from nuclear wasteland and ultimately would be responsible for killing at least a billion people death by radioactive food. And because there's so many diseases and illnesses and autoimmune deficiencies and injuries 
from ingesting, consumption, breathing uh, radioactive uh, particles. It's heart problems, liver, lung, respiratory, pituitary, thyroid, adrenaline, just long-term debilitating diseases. Down syndrome and, and uh, autism are some of the first studies they'll do after a nuclear accident because you know that's going to show up. Shinzo Abe's alleged assassin claimed his family's donations to the church bankrupted them, and that Abe's ruling Liberal Democratic Party had long relied on the church to mobilize his followers to help them at election times. Dirty man. Fisheries Ministry to introduce three tritium plutonium testing devices. Plutonium testing devices. Plutonium. This caught me off guard, actually. And I, I meant to look up it, and I did, and I apologize. The Fisheries Ministry plans to introduce three devices. Is this South Korea? Or Japan? I can't remember. To introduce three devices to test for tritium. Now, wh why would you test for tritium? Well, that's the official cover story now. Why wouldn't you test for all the other? Like, curium is the biggest byproduct, by the way, not plutonium, certainly not tritium. And tritium signal, you can't detect the tritium signal because it's going to be drowned out by uranium, plutonium, americium, neutonium, strontium, and everything else. And plutonium in seafood. Well, they should have been checking, obviously, for 12 years. Right? It's been hemorrhaging in the deer for 12 years. <coughs> hemorrhaging in the deer for 12 years and plutonium. In seafood, what about all the other food? Remember, they picked up 18 million, uh, I'm sorry, 30 million one-ton bags in the nuclear wasteland. So why are you checking for just seafood? How come you're not checking? I mean, they're growing food right alongside of one-ton bags of radiation. Why, why wouldn't you check for that? And to your left are 14 prefectures that were banned by 55 countries for a decade. And unfortunately, you have to come here to hear that and find out about all of this. Vice Fishery Minister Park Sung Hung said on Friday that one testing device for tritium will be operated by the National Fishery Products Quality, Quality Management Services by November, and one each for tritium and plutonium by the National Institute of Fishery Science by December. So they're, they're gonna, if you're looking for tritium, then you're not honest. You're completely dishonest. China and the John International Atomic Energy Agency's team to sample and analyze Fukushima treated, treated water, treated water. The team will collect seawater and fish samples from an area around the plant and analyze them in analytical laboratories in each country to measure radioactivity. Well, how come they haven't been doing that for 12 years, seeing as the building's been gone for 12 years? Because you, you've been completely dubbed. Your future is com com completely compromised by an industry that hates your guts. Tokyo Electric Power Company offers ex officials explain the functions of water sampling devices for testing the tritium concentrations in treated water in Fukushima. Now we've covered this picture and this story and TEPCO is, has no right to even exist. There's zero right to exist. The only reason it exists is so you don't blame the nuclear industry. You blame this fictitious, fictional corporation known as Tempco, who can disappear overnight and probably will if the blame comes out. 
experts appointed by the International Atomic Energy Agency, who's worked very different, worked very hard to hide that away from you, worked diligently, and has promoted that only 2.2 grams is all that got out of that building. They're not an international atomic energy agency. They're the military industrial complex. That's who the International Atomic Energy Agency. That's their name, but they don't have that particular function. They do no work to quantify that type of an assertion. They'll compile the data and publish it in a report. And their last report said nothing got out of these buildings. I think they should be tried for crimes against humanity. And China, and I showed you that poll from Thursday's video, did um, South Korea, Taiwan, China, the International Atomic Energy Agency, Japan, labeled claiming that only 2.2 grams of tritium got out of four melted reactor buildings and f eight missing fuel pools. Each fuel pool had probably five to six reactor cores. And claiming that nothing got out on the tritium, is, is that evil or not? Is it not evil? And because of how radiation works and the incredible health issues associated with it, breathing it, drinking it, consuming it, washing in it, cooking in it, doing your laundry in it, the bioaccumulation for so many facets have to be taken into account. It have never been taken into account. China's despicable scum, just like the rest of them. Dolphins escaping Fukushima wastewater. False. And this was uh, AFP, I believe, fact checker. Yeah, AFP fact checker. So a video suggesting that the dolphins, stranded dolphins, and I covered the original story, they washed up on a beach, uh, um, um, a boat launch alongside of a major wharf, and w it was linked to Fukushima wastewater, was actually false. And so a AFP is fact-checking, and there's a major media, they're fact-checking a video that only had 4,000 views. So that level of paranoia is something new, huh? I mean, that's, that's all my goodness stuff, isn't it? So you, you often see this depiction, right? Over the years. And they say this was a German study that says it's going to take about um, six years for the radiation to cover the ocean. <coughs> yeah, I'm far from being back up to speed. There's so much stress trying to keep this operation floating. It's, it's just tearing me apart. Here's a model of the airborne radioactivity. This is based on 20 days, and this one is 21 days. And this is the Neptunium-239 dispersal based on venting, but not based on the actual meltdowns, based on just allegedly venting. And the period when they said they were venting radiation was the period after the tsunami, so there was no telephone poles for 1,200 miles to supply power. They have to run on external power. They can't supply their own power. And because of the tsunami, there was no power anywhere. So they're saying that the dolphins being associated with Fukushima wastewater, and this is important, right? So they're, they're only walking back till August the 24th of 2023 is what they're talking about. And so by proxy didn't say there was no damage pre-August 24, 2023. But this is France's model of radioactive fallout based on 16 days. 
And at 16 days, you got radioactive plumes covering the entire planet. That's France's model. This was the German model. worse than thought. Uh, studies from last year plant. indicate that radioactive water will years. contaminate the entire Pacific Ocean in just six years. Kim Minji reports. This graphic shows the gradual contamination of the Pacific Ocean due to leaks of radioactive water from the crippled Fukushima nuclear plant in Japan. The simulation, which was run by a German marine research institute, shows the entire Pacific waters being polluted by radioactive water in just six years. And so that was based on six years, but the fallout is only based on 20 days. So the oceans were covered in 20 days, not five years, six years. I launched research expeditions for six years myself and my trusty sidekick Zoe the poop machine and she pooped on every beach in British Columbia uh, there's 27,000 islands up there we meandered through those islands uh, for many many um, many many years four to five months a year without coming home and uh, this was very difficult well, we to time, one up. these research expeditions. We left no stones unturned. We being me. I published all the documentation up at my website, thenuclearproctologist.org. And so after the nuclear meltdowns, the radioactive fallout, we have a lot of documentation on damage to the Pacific Ocean. The species to your left were exterminated, and there was around 7,000 highly visible species. And so what they done was pretend that nothing happened. All the media came out, particularly the Western media in 2013, 2014, and claimed that there was no fallout, there was no adverse side effects. Despite the fact that we'd done the research, and since then I've been ostracized from all social medias, I have been um, targeted many times in court cases and given gag orders to silence me from directing you to the, the people that were covering this up. The species to your left are exterminated. So AFP is out there now claiming that there's no adverse side effects and that the only side effects could have happened was since August the 24th of this year, not from the original nuclear meltdowns and radioactive fallout. They're claiming that didn't happen. So this is a pivotal moment in the history of humanity. And we stand and rise to this challenge despite the enormous the enormous amount of influence this industry has. I believe running an educational program, educating the population that is willing to hear another version, and I provide the documentations for my assertions, which means I basically run myself into the ground all day, every day. But the research expeditions are unassailable. They're incontestable and that my documentation will stand the test of any time. And I provide GPSs at all of my uh, expeditions to back up. And so in the hopes that somebody else would go out and repeat the research expeditions, but he didn't. So when they say the dolphins were escaping Fukushima, and because the video had 4,000 views, AP, AFP had to come out and fact check it, and that a dick, TikTok had 1,500 views, so therefore, and one of their evidence, of course, was that, and claiming that because it's 10,000 miles from Fukushima, and the airborne radiation covers the entire planet, by the way, in 20 days, so covering 10,000 miles is hardly an issue. But the problem is, they're only talking about August the 24th of this year, they're, they're refusing to acknowledge what's been going on for 12 years. And this cracks me up on this evidence they show. You see this picture here where there's a wharf and a little shed, and there's a wharf and a little shed, therefore it's the same wharf and same shed. It's almost too much to bear. 
My research expeditions clearly showed that AFP, right, and this is, and this is what I mean by brainwashing and indoctrination. It's very subtle what they do. And, I, you know, in order for me to articulate what's really going on, I have to basically bombard you with documentations for almost all of my assertions. I don't have to do it. I can do a radio show, and if I was smart, I probably would. But I don't think I can educate the population with just words. I need to provide the documentation. So I put together, uh, I sacrificed everything to put together a studio that can handle any information and disseminate it. I've been denied the ability to live stream since this public relation campaign, not by YouTube and Rumble, per se, but by hackers. I just posted a two-hour video at Rumble on the weekend. It didn't show up again. It just sits there in purgatory. Fukushima radiation, deep-sea mining. This is Greenpeace. Greenpeace, who got, who claimed that they're anti-nuclear, and are, have refused, despite the fact now that I'll show you what I mean. I've been banned on all Greenpeace sites for tweeting them a picture, and I don't think I got the well. This picture is one of. And they refused to, uh, all the green pieces worldwide have banned me. Because obviously that's, that's a scary picture. You can't have that up in Greenpeace. And this picture here. And all Greenpeace had to do was retweet it out. And you could have killed the nuclear industry. Just tweet out that picture right there if you were a big influencer, a big uh, superstar and sports star or Whatever, if you got influence, you tweet that out. That, that is the end of nuclear. Why would you fake being in a building that don't exist, right? <coughs> uh, leading to a meltdown. Why, why would you say meltdown when you have multiple reactors melted down? Where's the S, right? It resulted in the contamination water used to cool the damaged reactor. It resulted in massive pollution where the food was banned by 55 countries, for goodness sakes, from 14 prefectures. It resulted in catastrophic radioactive fallout and numbers we've never seen in the history of humanity that is now on a short end of a stick because Greenpeace had silenced a few that we're trying to be, have a conversation. Greenpeace job is to drag you away from people like me. That's their job, right? Their job is to make sure you never see someone like me and that you donate, support them, but you don't support someone like me that's actually doing the job. Resulting in the contamination water used to cool the damage reactor, damage. And the buildings are patently destroyed. Radioactive fodder covered the entire planet. As a solution, the Japanese government proposed to discharge the radioactive water into the Pacific Ocean. And this raised concern about the environmental and health impacts. TEPCO say there is no alternative to the decision to discharge the water. Well. Like the idea of the discharge in the water because they can retroactively cover up their crimes, see? The discharge is never stopped. You can't, there is no buildings left. And some of this is so blatant, it's frightening that we don't have any descending voices anywhere on the entire planet providing you with the pictures and the documentation or even the, not, even the narrative. I can't, can't possibly understand it. I can't comprehend how the world can sit in silence. I can't comprehend it. I'm in shock all day, every day, all night, every night. But the world is not willing to acknowledge what happened. It's incomprehensible how much damage we're talking about. We're talking about an actual extinction event. And I provide that up at the nuclear proctologist with 
absurd amount of documentation. Nearly 70% of South Koreans are against Fukushima release. 70% of South Koreans. No, well, if 70% is against it, then everybody's against it. And But they're, they're only talking about tritium, the 2.2 grams of tritium. They're, they're riled up over 2.2 grams of tritium. Right, the whole, all the protests we've seen since July the 13th of this year is based upon, and you see it there, treated cooling water. Uh, there, there's nothing in the tanks. We know that because the buildings were gone right away. The tanks were built to manipulate you into not com being able to comprehend or look for anything else with the equation to be satisfied with just the tanks. But when you see the buildings, it's obvious that everything got out, which immediately debunks their assertion that it's equal to 3 grams of sugar or 2.2 grams of tritium in the 1,000 tanks. Now, the tanks were all built at the one time from January or from 2013 to beginning of 2014. The majority of the tanks, by the way, are small tanks, not big tanks. <coughs> the tanks are strictly there to make you complacent. The amount we're talking about, each reactor normally needs 4,500 tons a minute, a million gallons a minute. So you can fill up all the tanks with one reactor six times a day. But the average person has no comprehension of this. Nearly 70% of South Koreans uphold or oppose the release. And so this is what they've been promoting since July. To, they purposely are trying to get people to protest. South Korea is the, obviously one of the biggest proliferators of the propaganda. And they're going to have the biggest protest by proxy, right? And so then they're hoping that will be contagious in the Asian communities worldwide because that's what they're basically targeting. And they're hoping that will spill over uh, into the Western activists. And so they artificially had the pro-nuclear going out to pretend that they're anti-nuclear protesting the tritium. <coughs> and you can expect groups like... Um, beyond nuclear to participate in those conversations and Michael Schellenberg's Environmental Progress, which is a nu pro nuclear lobbying group disguised as an as an environmental group. Regardless of the sign which is the same as Greenpeace, right? Regardless of the scientific examination by the International Atomic Energy Agency who says only 2.2 grams got out of the building, so why would they be in the conversation with anybody that's honest or even got a brain? Nearly 30% though said the International Atomic Energy Agency examination could not be trusted. And they have no, uh, they have, well first off, they're basing their idea on 2.2 grams of tritium too. And so they, don't, they have no idea how right they actually are though in that statement. International Atomic Energy Agency says they own the oceans, so therefore they gave the green light to Japan to release the water. The idea is Japan has been releasing it for 12 years. They need a cover story to cover the last 12 years of releases. And that's what the tanks were all about. If you fill up the tank, like the stuff we're talking about is 2.2 sieverts of beta per liter. Three sieverts is a lethal dose to a human, for goodness sakes. So you can take a couple of gallons of this to any subway and everybody walks past it for a million years, dies that day. So imagine putting that in the big tanks, 300,000 gallon tanks, for instance. Which means you're looking at around 1.4 million sievers because it's much higher than that because you've got to include not just beta, you've got to have alphas and neutrons and gammas. And then by proxy, you've got to have x-rays into that equation, beta rays, neutron rays, gamma shine. So if you build a tank and you fill it up with this stuff, you can't build any more tanks on the site. You can't get back on the site. So there is nothing in the tanks. You can't filter it because the filters now will be a million sieverts and you can never get near the site again because the buildings are putting out lethal doses from thousands of feet away and you don't have to you know, the walls of these buildings are not going to protect you. Paper suits are not going to protect you. 
big rub out here. And the President Yoon Suk Yul, which was a former prosecutor, and two years ago before he was elected, uh, was there campaigning saying there was no nuclear meltdown at Fukushima, there was no collapse at Fukushima. And at his first day in office, what did he do? He went to a nuclear power plant and stood with the scumbag employees and had his picture taken for the media to release the very first day in his administration and announced the renaissance, nuclear renaissance. You can't have a nuclear renaissance and acknowledge nuclear had a bad attribute. He even announced a daily meal of seafood to persuade the public that they would be safe. Telling the public should eat a, a daily meal of seafood. Uh, like the, it's extraordinary because we've covered it since July the 13th. And we've been covering this for 12 years. But since July the 13th, we covered the new cover story every day. We barely cover other nuclear news cycle because this is such an important story. And once this, once, and which is we're seeing right now, is now it's disappeared from the narrative, we'll never have a conversation about it again. And so we pushed the narrative. I, I was censored from every direction and successfully censored. I've been ostracized from all social medias. Import ban on Japanese seafood has loopholes, says the lawmaker. This is South Korea. So it turns out South Korea has been importing a ridiculous amount, uh, 1.4 billion pounds in the last 10 years of seafood. But there's another loophole there that's not included in that equation. And this was import of processed seafood and rice, rice. And remember, the food was banned by 55 countries for a decade from 14 prefectures. Just Fukushima prefecture cooks or produces over a billion pounds of rice a year. That should never grow food in the nuclear wasteland, but all 14 prefectures, and they're the big prefectures, half the country, and their producers, agricultural producers, they're incredibly contaminated. The food was banned by 55 countries for a decade. They never stopped growing the food and shipping it worldwide. Canada removed all restrictions after 93 days, so Japan, for the first decade, basically couldn't ship it to too many places, but Canada had removed all restrictions, so they poisoned everybody in Canada. And now we see diseases rampant in every single household that wasn't there 10 years ago, 12 years ago, right? Uh, Seoul only bans fresh seafood from the affected region. And what they do is they ship to other prefectures and relabel it. Korea could still unknowingly consume processed seafood from Fukushima and seven other nearby prefectures as such products do not fall under the ban of fresh seafood. And are not la they're not labeled what prefectures they're from. A total of 334 metric tons of processed seafood from eight Japanese prefectures were imported in Korea from 2018 until July of this year, with 80% of them originating from the nuclear meltdown zone. That's 666,000 pounds of seafood that wasn't tested. Canned mackerel, dried edible seaweed, as well as herring roe, kelp roe is another name to use for it. Lawmakers argued there could be potentially health risk due to the food exposure to the treated wastewater. Wait, but the food was banned by 55 countries for a decade. How come that's not in the equation? Why ain't we talking about that? Why are we talking about wastewater? Because this is how the propaganda works. Eh? Started discharging into the sea from late August. And we've just, they're talking about August the 24th, which is when they banned me from live streaming on multiple social media networks. 
by a hacker, not by the media themselves. A Korean consumer, because there's no other descending voices, they got no one to pick on, might as well go all out on Dana, on scumbag Dana. A Korea consumer can also purchase the goods online from eight affected prefectures, including a means of direct foreign purchase, also known as Jitgu. The same was true for whale, white rice from Miyagi Prefecture, from the actual nuclear wastelands, massive nuclear wastelands. There's no Pacific import control guidelines regarding processed Japanese seafood from eight prefectures. There's no Pacific import control guidelines regarding processed Japanese seafood from eight radioactive prefectures. There is no import control. So who knows how much they really shipped in, see? Where sold seafood import ban is in place. It's just on the fresh stuff. Uh, there's not really a ban. They just got to send them a piece of paper saying it's good and they'll take it. It's 100% evil that's what the industry is on is only it's and it's really good at being evil but that's all it knows it's never um it's never been held, held accountable see and so there's no incentive not to be evil and it's really easy to be evil in the nuclear industry and now we're they have compromised the future of humanity and the eight million species and processed seafood that the korean consumers purchased through uh, Jitgu, which is a buying a payment system, averted the inspections and the actual tallies. Korea's bans imports of Japanese seafood from multiple prefectures. Chiba is right alongside of Tokyo, for goodness sakes, 20 kilometers from Tokyo. It's basically metropolitan tro Tokyo because Tokyo is 36 million people. Right, so that's absurd numbers we're talking about. And some of them, and some of those prefectures, by the way, are not even listed in there. So I got to make a new model to put in the extra prefectures where the food is banned. The ban has been in effect since 2013, two years after the nuclear meltdowns. Two years later, Two, why did you wait two years? How many people did you poison in the first two years? And that was the worst time. That was the worst food because that was the original pulse event. You didn't have it banned, sir, in South Korea, really. You despicable creatures. You disgusting, revolting creatures. You hideous monsters. You insidious, hideous idiots. You idiots, you morons. <clears throat> you didn't ban it for the first two years, you morons. You stupid, you scumbags, you disgusting scumbags. And leakage, leakage. I despise journalists with every fiber in my body. I just despise them. They're the worst of the worst that human has to offer. Of nuclear contaminated water ensued. After a lengthy dispute between Seoul and Tokyo, a 2019 decision by the World Trade Organization, we covered that, gave Seoul an upper hand over its seafood import ban. <coughs> so when he banned them, the food from the nuclear wasteland, Japan freaked out and said, well, you can't do that. You're part of the World Trade Organization. We'll take you to the World Trade, which is UN. All these organizations are always UN. And UN said, no, you got to take the food from the nuclear wasteland. You're part of the, the World Trade Organization. You, we said, well, we're going to appeal it. And so finally, they won the appeal. But they never had no ban for the first two years, really. Man, surreal, isn't it? So Korea didn't ban the food from a nuclear wasteland for the first two years. That is frightening. 
And they found a loophole, a loophole, of course. Some uh, South Koreans do not knowingly consume seafood from Fukushima. Can the government take proper action to seal the loopholes while assuring the public the safety of the seafood? So this was meant, right, to brainwash South Korea because 70% of South Korea is up in arms right now. So this was a sophisticated public relation campaign to assure the South Koreans that it's only tritium and three grams of sugar that they have to worry about. And even sick, more sickening, when they asked to comment about the matter during a parliamentary audit Thursday, Fisheries Minister Cho Sung Wang said direct purchases in small quantities should be seen as a matter of individuals, the ultimate betrayal. And that indicating a prefecture of origin on a product labeling is nearly impossible in reality. Really? When it's not, that's why you got a label, moron. The tanks were built at the same time. The water filtration systems didn't work. The Alps didn't work. The Riva system didn't work. The Siri system didn't work. These systems simply can't work. So if you got 200 million atoms, and, and on the head of a needle you can't see it, how are you going to separate 50 of them? They're all the same size. How are you going to separate 50 uranium or 50 plutonium or 50 americium or 50 cesium or 50 neptunium? Or how, how does that work? Well, you can't do it. You have to contain everything. You can't filter such a small amount, so you've got to contain everything. You can't contain everything. And that the amount of water that they said they were spraying on the reactors each day was equal to a garden hose cut four ways. Right, so imagine splice, splice cutting a garden a garden hose like everybody has in their backyard, a garden hose if they have a yard. And then that, that garden hose split four ways. Each one of them is sprayed on one of the nuclear meltdowns, which is equal to about 140 tons a day. And that is what they've been collecting and filtering, they said. So nothing's getting out, everything's collected, everything's filtering. filtering. But let's go back through the documentation. This is 2014 in April. The advanced liquid processing system has yet to function. The Arriva system, which was the same as the Elp system, which is France's, for the last three years is unused and kept out of operation, the same as the Elp system is unused and kept out of operation. The bypass, groundwater bypass operation didn't work. The, the, they were going to build a billion dollar fence, that didn't work. They were going to build an ice wall, that didn't work. Then the series system, by the end of 2013, we never heard of it again, because that didn't work. You can't filter something. They did, though, acknowledge in 2013 that the plant had already released enormous amounts of highly contaminated water directly into the ocean, from a plethora of leaks from the reactor buildings. The reactor buildings are not leaking, the buildings are actually gone, for goodness sakes. <coughs> like, so, suggesting there's a leak, how are you supposed to come up with solutions when you're pretending nothing happened? How does, how do we do that? And, you know, and you, they're pretending nothing never happened, right? They're pretending they're in a building and that the building never got damaged, for goodness sakes. This comes as radioactive nucleoids above safety standards were detected on the screening stage before entering Korean markets. So what they're, they're trying to build a picture for the South Koreans to think that they have competent safeguards, right? When it's absolutely untrue. The South Korean nuclear industry same as any other nuclear industry, they're degenerate, monstrous scumbags. They have a long legacy of poisoning you and your communities. It's what they do. They, they're no good at anything else. They're only good at destroying everybody and all the species' future. That's it. They have no redeeming qualities. 
And so South Korea have a strong man. That was a strong man's argument is what South Korea was doing. And the Japanese seafood or fisheries minister said a full ban on Japanese seafood imports is excessive because of China, right? So again, what they're saying is nothing got out. That's what he's, that's what he's, Creatures claiming that not even got out of the buildings that don't even exist anymore. Despite the ongoing discharges of wastewater, listen, it, it hasn't stopped hemorrhaging out for over 12 years, almost 13 years. The, the initial inventories were gone in six days of all the reactors. Each reactor is worse than all nuclear meltdowns worldwide combined. You know, if you, these buildings should have been razed right to the ground, there's nothing left. They left it there so they can build a contraption over it and pretend that they were in the fuel pools, and that's what they done. It was 2013, 2014, and uh, 2020, for the 10th anniversary, they said they got everything out of Reactor 3's fuel pool. <laughs> Reactor 3 don't exist. So here's the fish minister. Uh, uh, and this, so, so South Korea, Taiwan, China, the International Atomic Energy Agency, and Japan are working together to hoodwink the entire Asian population. And I've been at this from the very beginning and the documentation is incontestable, it's unassailable. Yorkshire MP calls for laser sharp focus on getting young people into the nuclear energy sector. Laser sharp focus. No, they can't have any other career, only nuclear. That's it. And that's the British, right? Now they're coming for your kids. Oh my goodness, I wish I can get over this flu, my goodness. They need to fill the gaps of 150,000 slaves to build the reactors. And so they're going to have laser sharp focus so your kids will be their useful idiots and destroy the future generations by proxy, right? Outrages arms companies attends career fair. So the graduations for the students were invaded by the arms companies. The universities, insidious relationships, sexual ra relationships with the military industrial complex. That's why we call them schools of mass destruction. Like, it's hard to comprehend how evil this industry actually is, but I actually have a pretty good way of doing it. And I think it's 100% effective 100% of the times. There's Madison, the creature. Uh, what, what, what's the campaign she's running for environmental progress again? I can't remember. A clean, a green, a green new deal, is it, with nuclear? I can't, something like that. I got it there somewhere. Oh, yeah, I'll find it. A green new deal. Nuclear terrorist Madison, the monster Hillary, campaigned for a green nuclear radioactive earth wasteland deal. A green new nuclear deal. So right by doing that, she calls nuclear green, see? It's a disgusting creature. So, hang on here, we'll get there. Just want to run you through one of the strangest stories inconceivable. This is there's a lot of studies 
shown how food uptakes radiation, which is really interesting, and, and it raises a curious question, because they know, they know for a fact that plants and, and tomato plants, in this case, suck up radiation like crazy. So why would you have nuclear power plants surrounded by farms? You know, child's risk of cancer is, is, is horrific. It's actually much worse than 100 times harder than adult is thousands because their stem cells uh, are so important, their thyroids are so important, and the radiation will mutate the stem cells and, and the hormones from the thyroids. But why are all nuclear power plants surrounded? by farms. It's literally all of them. There's a few that's not, but it's basically all of them are surrounded by farms. Because the spent fuel pools are still splitting atoms and there's no containment. And they don't want the radioactive bioaccumulation. So if you have farms, you move the majority of the radiation because they know through all the academic studies how plants will suck up radiation, see? And it's not just cancer, there's heart problems, liver problems, lung problems, respiratory, pituitary. And now our whole planet food chain is compromised from massive pulses like Fukushima. Children with 11 beckles a kilogram start to see heart problems. So how do you avoid, because it's, so it's such a small amount, 11 beckles a kilogram, you can put 200 million atoms, and each one of them is a Beckwell pulse. A Beckwell is an energy pulse a second, at almost at the speed of light. So you can put 200 million of these atoms on the head of a needle, which you can't see. That's 200 million Beckwells a second. So, but They're so small, you can't see that, 200 million of them. But each one is catastrophic. 11 of them will see heart problems for children. What does it do for little birds and little mammals and little animals and little fishies and frogs and, and bumblebees and everything? It's catastrophic, see? And this is Sellafield, United Kingdom. And it's been surrounded by farms for seven decades, destroying people in the supermarkets, inhaling just one hot particle. And everything from a nuclear meltdown is a hot particle. Inhaling just one radioactive hot particle can cause cancer. And when your nuclear power plants, which are should be labeled as disease factories, and almost every one of them is surrounded by farms, and that the studies clearly show that this is a very bad idea, and putting playgrounds around nuclear plants, 50 beckles a kilogram in humans lead to irreversible lesions in the vital organs. 50 beckles a kilogram in humans lead to irreversible lesions. Again, you can put 200 million atoms on the head of a needle, but you can't see it. Smell it, taste it, hear it, feel it, touch it, pick it up, perceive it. So getting 50 beckles a kilogram in your food is easy. They're doing it because they know what the results are. And probably one of the worst betrayals imaginable is where they claim the food from Japan is safe because it's less than 150 or 100 beckles a kilogram of cesium. But they refuse to look for plutonium, curium, uranium, and a thousand other fission products that you're worried about. Like the industry... It's only good at one thing, and that's being evil, and it excels. It absolutely excels at being evil. 50 beckles a kilogram in humans lead to irreversible lesions in the vital organ, but 50, 100 beckles is considered safe by the industry, but the experts will tell you 50 beckles a kilogram is catastrophic. And why are all these nuclear power plants surrounded by firms? And how is it they don't know these studies don't exist. So if you acknowledge the study exists, then why would you build a nuclear power plant, engineer it into the farmlands? Because you, you really have to do, you got to think, what is farmland? Farmland is very soft land, right? It's very porous land. It's designed to soak, soak up water, and it's designed so roots can grow rapidly and plants can thrive. It's designed to be tilled and everything else, and it's been doing that for many generations. 
So in order to build a nuclear plant there, you have to harden up that site. It's typically a half a billion dollars in the preparatory of the site before you can build anything on it. You need to harden up the ground. You need to dig down, fill it up with shale, and crushed rocks and stones, and cement and everything else. It's a long, slow process. But they know that the fuel pools are going to hemorrhage radiation for 100 years after the plant shuts down. And this is why almost every single nuclear power plant is surrounded by farms, as far as you can see. And this is why Japan never stopped growing food in a nuclear wasteland. And this is why, you see, 55 countries ban food from 14 prefectures when everybody should ban the food from all the nuclear power plant communities and anything within 100 miles of it. Because radiation is not limited to the local farmland. A lot of it will blow worldwide. It doesn't need, it's like a little engine. It's pulsing energy at the speed of light every second. Do you know of any other engine with that particular attribute? And then the adverse side effects that are vicious and quick. So you fill up your cupboard with this stuff, take your children to the hospital in a few months because of leukemia. Because you're producing so many white blood cells, they call it leukemia. So and, and they know exactly what they're doing. And uh, you have all these uh, esteemed academics like Sean Burney from Greenpeace. He knows everything I'm telling you. Greenpeace is not going to tell you this stuff. They're not trying to create a future. They're trying to destroy it. And they want to suck all the resources away from people like me. So we, we go out of business. And that's exactly what's happening, right? Anybody that tries to come out and be honest can't survive. Don't be fooled by pay industry consultants. Low doses of ionized radiation causes cancer. Yeah, but there's 1,800 other diseases and illnesses and autoimmune deficiencies and injuries and in that you got to put into context. You open up, once you compromise your immune system, you're susceptible to pathogens and viruses that were normally harmless and innocuous and benign. And so if you've got a weak immune system, you eat potatoes. Or, or you eat um, weed or something like that, you are in real trouble. And how do you avoid this? And, that's, and the point is, they got over 400 of these disease factories worldwide surrounded by farms. They, they are out to destroy your planet, not just you. Not, this is not population control. This is extermination of all species. Nuclear power plants are not surrounded by farms because they're bored. This is engineered in. This is on purpose. They hit your guts and they've been at it for uh, 70 years. And the world refuses to fight back. The world sits there with their fist up their bum. Like a good little slave. And say nothing. I can't sit in silence. I haven't got it into me. I guess I'm old and pathetic. I can't just sit in silence. Oh, I see everything I love, and I see this beautiful planet being exterminated. I just don't have it in me to sit in silence. I really don't, and I won't. That's what I got, that's it, and that's all of it. I see everybody more late. I'm sorry I missed the show last night. It wasn't my best night. I had a long day of, of the, what the flu does to you. I'm doing the best I can. I did post a, um, a presentation on Israel and Gaza up on BitChute. I got new views on it a couple of days ago. It uh, covered the first seven days. A lot of unique attributes of that story that nobody has covered. And I know this subject for over two decades I've covered this subject. And I've been ostracized really the entire time. But I managed to get better at telling the story. We'll see everybody tomorrow. Have a great night.